Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. I'm High Lord Tamerlane, and this here is a nice little treat that was waiting for me when I got home from work today. We've got the new Dreamer Core Box for Malifaux here. The Dreamer is a lot more grown up looking than he used to be, and Lord Chompy Bits is getting a bit long in the gut there as well. So, what do we have? Obviously, we have the Dreamer right here. It's going to be hard to see him because I'm just trying to get it on camera. We have the Alps, which look a little bit more interesting than the originals. Hopefully, they're a little bit bigger. We got Capellius again, the bag of goodies. And then there is the big old Lord Chompy Bits. So, I will try to dig out my original models. I know I still have the Dreamer and Chompy somewhere. I think I have a Coppelius too. I'll have to go look around. I did a lot of swapping and converting with these guys, so I never really use Malifaux for their intended purpose, which is funny because I really, really like the line. Um, I own way too many Malifaux models. I've painted way too many Malifaux models. So we have the new cards. We'll leave that to people who actually know what they're talking about. We want to see the good stuff. So here is Lord Chompy Bits. He gets an entire sprue all to himself. Doesn't look as big as a Groot Slang, but he definitely looks a little bit wider. Look at the size of these hands. Where's my Marine? Come here, Marine. Where are you? You're buried in a pile of stuff here. There's like a million different models that I'm like trying to film. Here we go. So yeah, he's a big boy. And he suffers from some privateer press legs. Look at the tiny little feet he's got going on there surface detail looks decent i mean there's at least some ridges and texture in his body because i remember i was kind of disappointed with the original i'll show you it was pretty smooth all over and it doesn't seem as much the case here it's all on the bottom all right so that is the big guy we'll do him last i'll probably build him first and show you last but whatever all uh, right, so here is Capellius, who looks a bit larger than I remember. First of all, he was hunched over originally. Here is the Dreamer and Dog. His doggy. This cricket bat, it looks like. And then we have the Alps over here, A, B, and C. They definitely look a lot bigger than the Alps. If those were the guys that originally came with the Dreamer, which I'm, no, those were daydreams now that I think about it. Well, these look a lot bigger. I think you get a lot more plastic this time around than you did with the original set. So, if you're looking to play Chompy, Nightmare, Dreamer, whatever, I don't know what I'm trying to talk about, Dreamer Crew, I think you're going to be in for a pleasant surprise, at least in terms of model parts. I'm going to start with the Dreamer and the Dog. Let's get them popped out and see what they're like. All right, well, we got the Dreamer all finished up here with Dog. Sadly, I forgot to film them prior to building them, but that's okay. We can at least get a good look at the Dreamer himself. So they're both supposed to actually be on the base. It's a 30 millimeter base, which is kind of interesting. So as he's flipping everybody the bird here with his cricket bat. Details pretty decent. He was very easy to build. No real issues there whatsoever, which is kind of surprising for a Malifaux figure, but you know, it is what it is. Dog, on the other hand, or whatever he's supposed to be, Went together quite easily and quickly. We had the main body, the four legs just really slotted in there. The head was actually two pieces that just kind of slid together and attached to a contact point on the neck. And then the tail just kind of lodged itself between the body and the legs as well. It's a really cramped base with the two of them on there. I'm kind of surprised it's only on a 30 millimeter base. It's going to take some Tricky maneuvering to figure out how to get them all on there. I might use one of the old Micro Arts custom bases that Cool Mini did from that Kickstarter years and years ago that they seem to want to refuse to ever sell anymore, but it is what it is. So with them done, I think I'm going to move on to Capellius next. So let me grab all his parts and we'll take a look at him. Here's Capellius. Doesn't look all that complicated. In fact, actually it looks easier than he was the first time around. So his body is one major chunk, the back of his coat, I kind of remember him being like that. The arms, his box of goodies, can we see what's in his box of goodies? Little things, I want to say eyeballs. And then some extra tentacles right there that are going to attach to the face. 
So just a quick glance, he's actually a little bit bigger than the Dreamer, which is kind of funny because he was about the same size as the Dreamer previously, even though he was hunched over. So it's kind of nice to see him in all of his full-size cthulhu -y glory. So we'll put him together next. And now we got Capellius all done. He was really simple, though. He really was. Not too challenging there. Like I mentioned, he is a little bit bigger this time around compared to the Dreamer. I'm not even sure how old the Dreamer is supposed to be. He looks like a teenager, I guess. Capellius's weird face tentacles were a bit of a challenge because I put way too much glue and it kind of blotted out where his eyes are going to go, but don't make my mistake, okay? Next up, we've got the first two chunks of the set done. We're going to put the Alps together. Where's A? Makes sense. We'll start with A. And I think... Uh, I don't even know. Looks like just these parts are his. I'm not sure. But there's two tails. Eh, we'll figure it out. Well, since I couldn't figure out which Alp was A or B, I went ahead and started with C. C was the easiest of the bunch. Two-part face, two-part body halves, and a tail. That's it. He's pretty simple. I'm not thinking he's going to be much trouble. So we'll get started with him and we will move on to the other two. Here's Alp C. In case you're curious, here he is with Dog. They're pretty similar size. I didn't do a good job of getting that head on there. I'm going to have to mess with that. Yeah. Don't be like me. Almost reminds me of something from the gibbering hordes in the other side. I think it's the pose. It's kind of funky. I don't know what he is. He really reminds me of the daydreams. All right. Let's see which of the next Alps I feel like building. And here we have Alp A. We got them all done. Putting him with Alp B. No, that's C. And Dog. Just to give you guys a good idea of how big that Alp is. And with the Dreamer in tow, he's a lot bigger than the Daydreams ever were. That's for sure. Definitely a lot more... Thickness and mass being taken up by this guy here. I like him. And just like about every other Neverborn model that exists in the world and game of Malifaux, you probably could find a use for it if you put your imagination to it. There's a lot of interesting stuff in the line. All right, one more Alp. And then it is off to build Lord Chompy Bits. So here we have all the parts to Alp B, our final Alp. We've got the body... Lower legs and torso, his arms, his feet, which are going to attach that torso, some kind of a claw thing. I, I don't even know. Maybe this is his head. I don't know what this part is. I really don't. And a tail. And I swear to God, I got all the pieces off, so I'm not sure. It looks like he's got, like, part of his head, maybe? I really don't know. Okay, well, at least we can figure out the legs and the arms and the tail. We'll figure out what the other extra stuff is for in a second I can hopefully explain it to you and voila the last of the Alps he's got this cool little hunched over pose here the two parts I couldn't figure out were actually the two halves of his head they glued on and then just slid into the little slot on the neck that was attached there one thing to watch out for is his tail actually has to go between the legs not around them I haven't mentioned it yet either but all of these models so far in this crew, more so than any of the other 3rd edition Malifaux figures I've built, with maybe the exception of the new Death Marshals that came with Lady Justice, have been quite obnoxious in the fact that even the slightest little extra bump or blemish of a sprue cut will cause them to not want to actually fit together. So you really need to take your time cleaning these things up, otherwise they're not going to be as cooperative as they need to. So you can see the lineup so far. And then it's time for the big guy. So, where are we gonna start? I'm thinking we're going to start with his hands, just because they're big and 
and it takes up a lot of space. We'll do the hands and the head. We'll break it off into little chunks and see if I can show it all. So far, I have not had to go online to look at any kind of resources on how to build this stuff, so it all seems pretty intuitive and natural, hopefully for the big guy as well. Let's see what happens. And here we have all the parts to Lord Chompy Bits. And after spending a bit of time trying to dry fit everything, I've pretty much figured everything out and I can walk you guys through it. So in case you're curious, worried, whatever the case may be, obviously the two halves of the body are going to fit together pretty much like so. Pretty easy there. You have two slots on the legs. You have a long single one and a T-shape on the back. That is for his loincloth. It's going to slot in and snap into place okay if it doesn't snap into place it's not going to actually fit and i didn't finish cleaning off the body yet so bear with me there so it's going to go like that the next thing you're going to notice he's got a huge gap right here on the back of his shoulder that's what this bendy piece is for right here it's going to slide into the upper arm and then you can smush it out and make sure it's all nice and neat the smaller arms are going to be the bottom arms and are going to attach like so. I would like to mention that they are quite sharp fingernails on Lord Chompy Bits, so be careful with those. Okay, they're big and chunky. So that's where the lower arms go. The big hands, obviously, you can figure out based on where the thumbs are. They're going to take the top slots, and they are quite large. I mean, they're like gorilla size, they're as big as he is. Of course, he's in full-on Kador Warjack mode here with the tiny stubby legs, but that's a different story altogether. The last few pieces are this weird headpiece. You're going to basically just slide that in to start the process of building his head. And then he's got the super deluxe predator mouth going on there with all the extra teeth as well. So it's pretty simple. Hopefully that's helpful in getting it built in case you're wondering, or if you're just curious how the whole thing goes together. I'm going to grab the glue and we're going to put them together and see how he compares both to the rest of the crew and whatever I have left of the original plastic version. Because it was Lord Chompy Bits himself that got me first finally to take the plunge into Malifaux models in the first place. So it's nice to come back to him. And Lord Chompy Bits is done, and he is big. He is really big, like, no kidding. I can stand the marina. So yeah, and he is to scale, and I don't even have a base for him yet. And I heard some people whining and complaining online, going, oh, you know, I'm really worried. He just looks really short compared to the original Chompy, especially in the plastic. And I had the same fear, like, oh, you know, I mean, look at him at his legs. He's definitely going Kator Warjack style, and he's obviously been skipping on leg day. But when we take the original plastic Lord Chompy bits, you don't have to excuse my primitive paint job on it, even on the base, the new one is almost as tall, if not taller. And I mean, if I had a nice custom scenic base like this for him, I'd say he's he's actually going to be larger, both in width and in size, than this model, who I have always fondly, fondly enjoyed. He was a cool guy, but I hate to say it, Chompy, you're going to be retired for the new big bad. What's up? Yeah. So, grabbed... Just to give you guys a good indication, here is my poorly painted version of the original Dreamer. And like I said, he's all grown up now. He's not the best in focus at the moment. Bad lighting here, I apologize. But I think he's supposed to be like a teenager. I grabbed like Cornelius's daughter and they're about the same size. He's not like a full scale regular person. So... With the amount of plastic and stuff that you get in this set, you obviously don't get him. You want to stand up? I still don't know how I'm going to actually get both Dog and Dreamer on that base. It's just... It is a question for the ages. Alps. There's like no space for the two of them there. You gotta leave, dude. Another Alps. Pelius. And maybe I'll just put Dog on his own base and say, screw it. You get a good amount of guys here, honestly. And I was a 
a little worried when I picked this up during the Gen Con sale because I was like, why is this more money than all the other starters? But looking at it, you do get a lot bigger models and just as many as all the other starters. So be aware that, yes, it is a little bit more pricey than any of the other third edition starter sets. But, you know, like I said, he's a lot bigger than just about everything so far. The only other model I think that comes close in terms of size in the new edition would be the Fire Golem that came with uh, Elijah, but he didn't have a bunch of extra guys with him either. So, you get a lot for your money in this set. And as I've mentioned earlier, and always seem to mention, when it comes to Netherborn, you probably could find a lot of uses for these guys outside of just Malifaux too. There's always a need for gribbly gross and weird monsters. And probably, I have to say, that Lord Chompy Bits now is the reigning champion of largest plastic model in Malifaux that I can think of. And certainly for third edition. He might get trumped by a couple parts on a few other things. I still think the Groot Slang might be a little bit taller than him, but in terms of sheer mass, I think he's going to win. Almost to the point where I don't know if his poor little base that he's supposed to have is going to be able to, you know, hold him, contain him much. Now I just need a nightmare edition of him, right? Right. With that said, hopefully you guys have found this interesting. This is High Lord Tambourine with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.